Hello ladies. Bezrat Hashem. Today we're going to learn about Parshat Naso, which focuses on understanding what is true success, what is real success in life. The ideas um, are taken from Torah for Your Table by Rabbi Yisrael and Rabbi Osher Anshel Young Rice. We are told about a threefold priestly blessing, our blessing for eternity. God granted a gift to our patriarch Abraham, the privilege of bestowing blessing. In Genesis it says, and you shall be a blessing. The honor was passed to Isaac and then passed on to Jacob. In this Parsha, Hashem asked Moses to give over the gift to bless others over to Aaron, his brother, and all his descendants, the Kohanim. In the land of Israel, the Kohanim blessed the congregation daily. In lands outside of Israel, the Kohanim blessed the congregation only on holidays. No matter where we are, the blessings are part of our daily prayers. Morning prayers, Bet Shema, during the Amidah, and on Shabbat, parents bestow a blessing on their children. Hashem first proclaimed these prayers on Mount Sinai. Nevertheless, they are still part of us today. When we say these blessings, we connect with the millions of souls who preceded us. They forever accompany us from generation to generation. The first blessing states, May God bless you and safeguard you. The second one says, May God illuminate his countenance for you and be gracious to you. The third one, May God lift his countenance to you and bless peace and establish peace for you. This is written in Numbers. What is the meaning behind these blessings? There is profound meaning be behind each one. The first blessing has three words, symbolizing our three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The second blessing has five words, representing the five books of Moses. The third blessing has seven words, reminding us of the seven heavens. Prior to imparting this blessing, the Kohanim themselves have to recite a prayer. At the end of the prayer, the word Ahava is used. Ahava in Hebrew means love. This is teaching us many things. Before one blesses anyone, one's heart must be overflowing with love and care. It also teaches us that you don't have to be given the title of a Kohen of a Kohen to bless anyone. All you need is to be full of love. Torah knowledge and wisdom may be attained by many people. However, the preciousness of this gift cannot be shared if one does not feel love or care towards his listeners, and the blessing cannot be complete. There are further insights into the blessing. The first blessing highlights health and sustenance. These gifts, however, may easily be abused and misused and unappreciated. So we conclude it with the word, Yishmirecha, may God protect you, because ultimately our health depends on the protection of Hashem. The second blessing requests that God illuminate our minds with the holy teachings of the Torah, concluding with the word, Ve'yehu necha, may he cause you to find favor in his eyes and in the eyes of others. In order for us to influence others as we share our Torah wisdom, we must be likable by others. And the third asks God to look upon us with compassion, forgive our sins, and grant us shalom which means peace, teaching us that without peace, life is meaningless. We can be given the most extravagant materialistic amenities and luxuries. However, if there is no, if there is no peace in our relationships, all of what we have has ultimately no value. Let us remind ourselves, why do we have the things that we have? We have what we have in order to serve Hashem, in order to do His will and in order to make him happy. Whether it be through our homes, whether it be through our jobs or our cars, or through any other materialistic means, all Hashem wants for us is to have peace in our relationships so we can reap all of the benefits of the blessing and live a complete life. 
Our most important prayers end with a prayer of peace, the Amida service and Kaddish. Our sages teach us, Im ein shalom, ein klum. If there is no peace, there is nothing. The Parsha highlights, it's not what we have, but what we do with what we have. This Parsha is the longest in the Torah. At the end of the Parsha, it states the offerings that each of the 12 princes of Israel brought to the tabernacle. We are told about the offerings in 176 verses. We are told of each of the offerings separately. What is interesting, however, is that the princes brought exactly the same gift. Remember, there are no redundancies in the Torah without a deeper meaning. Why are we told of each of the gifts of the princes, even though it was the same gift? The princes of Israel were happy to bring the identical gifts because they understood that it is not what they are bringing, but, in the, but it is the manner, the manner in which they are bringing what they're bringing. It, is, it was also easy for the princes to give the exact same gift because jealousy, resentment, and the desire to outdo others were foreign concepts to them. They were foreign and unfamiliar practices. God is teaching us here. What is special about a person is the person's essence, the person's spirituality. So we can ask, how can I enrich my essence? By investing in myself, in the way I fulfill Hashem's mitzvot. It is the way that I do the mitzvot that I do. As women, we can pride ourselves by falsely listing how much we have accomplished during the day, during our lives, how many things we have crossed out in our to-do list. Let us honestly question ourselves. Was it done happily? Was our to-do list done happily? Or any one task? Willingly? Or do we just put one foot in front of the other just to get through the day? Rabbi Zan Esther Baila Schwartz teaches, what is true success? It is not how much I have. It is what I do with what I have. This includes my physical blessings as well as my gifts and my talents. It is important for us to internalize this understanding because it is completely contrary to the ideals of our society. Our society defines success as the more you have, the more successful you are. But let's think about it. Is a person who was born to inheriting, to inheriting millions more successful than one who has worked so hard to make a living, who can barely make ends meet? By our society's standards, yes. How can we better understand this concept? Let us picture two scenes. Scene A. Picture being invited as a Shabbat guest to a beautiful home owned by an extremely wealthy family. And the host personally greets you at the door, warmly gives you a drink, showing you the resting area, inquires if you're hot or cold, making sure the whole evening your needs are met, you are enjoying your evening, and that you are comfortable. Picture scene B. Picture being invited by the same type of wealthy host, but as soon as you come through the door, you're feeling a sense of coldness because you're overwhelmed by the luxurious home and lifestyle. The host doesn't greet you at the door. The servant does. You wait in the nearest sitting area, feeling thirsty, hungry, and tired. Not knowing what to expect, where to go to feel comfortable, and attend to your needs. Finally, the host wakes up from their midday nap and is ready to greet you with a nod. In which situation does a person feel welcomed? Which one do they feel intimidated or less than? In scene A, the hosts used their physical gifts to do mitzvot. They used everything that they had to serve Hashem. That is true success. Success is not being given a lot. Success is what I do with what I am given. We're going to conclude with one final thought. Everyone has a purpose. This Parsha reminds us that every individual, individual has a purpose, a mission in life. It opens with the words, count the children of Gershon as well. 
The children of Gershon were responsible to carry curtains and other heavy items of the tabernacle. One may call them mere schleppers, not a very respectable position, especially in our day. However, we are imparted here a very important lesson in life. We are all important. How can we relate to this idea in our generation? All our roles are important, whether it is a janitor, postal worker, cashier, garbage collector, sanitary worker, a mother, a father, or the President of the United States. Imagine if all of the garbage collectors or sanitary workers quit their jobs because they felt they, were they weren't contributing themselves in a meaningful way. As a society, we will live in a very dirty and unsanitary world. We all have a purpose and need one another. The awareness that we are implementing our purpose in life colors even the most simple, mindless task with meaning and holiness because, because we do it, because we want to serve Hashem. May we, may we merit by Zrat Hashem to do the best we can with what we have by valuing ourselves and others. Thank you for listening. Leia Abramov, Being and Becoming.